Yo, what up guys, Marin here, and welcome to day number five of Throne of Eldraine spoiler reactions. We are reacting to these things daily, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to not miss out. If you, if you missed the last ones, you can go and check them out on the channel, and we are here to resume today with a few more. Starting right off, Thunderous Snapper. So we got the uh, Simic one of the cycle. We got, I think this is the last one. I think we got all the other ones already. There might be one more, probably like a black, white one or something. So whenever you cast a spell with CMC Fiber Greater, draw a card. That is actually like my favorite one of that cycle. I think all the other ones were kind of mediocre. The blue black one was okay. Um, but this one like for commander, like for a blue black commander deck, that's just another just source of card advantage. And also if you're going devotion based with Nykthos, there's a lot of devotion for you right there. So I kind of like this one a lot. And also it's a turtle hydra and that looks super cool. Look at that art, dude. That looks amazing. So. Yeah, like if you're just like in commander, a lot of your spells are CMC five or greater. You know, if you're playing like Prime Speakers of Ghana or something as your commander, you're gonna cast a lot of big fatties and you're just gonna draw a bunch of cards. So I like that one. Raging Red Cap, three mana for a one, two double strike. That's whatever. We've already had one power double strikers for two mana and less before. Ogre, Elspeth Knight Arant. Four mana for a three, four, and whatever it attacks, another target creature, another target attacking knight gains a menace until end of turn. Okay, so that's definitely one you want to pick up when you're drafting Knights and Limited because Menace is a premium ability to get in there with aggro dudes. So definitely want to pick up one or two of these at your top end. Lost Legion. Um, let me see. Somebody told me to zoom in a little bit more. Let me see if I can do that. Control plus. Is that good? All right, that, that looks good. Let's do that. All right, Lost Legion. There's three mana for a 2-3. And when it enters the battlefield, scry too. You know, that is actually not bad for Popper. I mean, it's pretty bad because like, um, I mean, it's not terrible because people play Phyrexian Rager in Popper, but the difference is Phyrexian Rager will cantrip itself, whereas this one will scry too. So it's kind of like half a card draw. Drawing two is kind of like half a card draw, but it, I think it all depends on preference. Would you rather lose a life and draw a card or would you rather scry two? So it's kind of the same thing, but if you wanted to run both, there you go, Popper Lost Legion. Knight of the Neep. Oh, Knight of the Keep. Three mana for a 3-2, that's whatever. Glass Casket, two mana, that's a really pretty card. Three mana for a artifact. When it enters the battlefield, exile tire creature and opponent controls and CMC three or less until Glass Casket leaves the battlefield. That's cool because it, it's not an enchantment that does that, it's an artifact that's doing that, and we've never had like this cheap exile effect on an artifact. So that's very new. Although the only difference is that it's not a it's not a colorless artifact, so it's not gonna have any significance for like commander or whatever but it's like cool that we're getting that effect on something other than an enchantment so that's nice um premium limited pickup right there and uh that probably will see play in standard um but if we get something like ancient grudge back maybe not but i like that deafening silence all right so each player can't cast more than one non-creature what each player can't cast Am I reading this correctly? Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell. This is... What? We're actually getting this? For one mana? Oh, man. This is... Okay. I can't believe this is uncommon. This needs to be... Okay. Pick up a thousand of these in foil immediately if you're a smart person. Pick up a thousand of these in foil immediately if you are a smart person. Because that is crazy. Okay, this is my favorite card of the set so far. This is definitely my favorite card of the set so far. Uh, yeah, I mean, as a Hate Bears player, as a Death and Taxes player, as a Stax player in Commander, like, I mean, this is, for one single white mana enchantment that you can protect with, like, Karmic Justice, Greater Aromancy, Privileged Position, Avacyn, um, anything like that. You can protect this thing. You Sterling Grove, you know, like... And then it just like shuts down storm players and you got a bunch of ways to protect it it's one mana so you can get it back like very easily um that is crazy that is so crazy because like i've always thought like you know rule of law does a thing rule of law does a thing curse of exhaustion does a thing but like they also affect you you can only cast one spell per turn but the only reason you're playing those cards is to shut down the storm players and Deafening Science, Silence lets you continue to play creature spells like your deck wants to do. It doesn't stop you, but it stops your opponents from storming. So this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Okay. 
And also in foil, that's gonna look super sweet because of these bright parts and the mouths are gonna be like illuminated by foily. And that's just amazing, dude. I can't wait for this card. This I've been waiting for this my whole life. All right, what is, let's just move on before I freak out anymore. <laughs> Red Cab Brawl, it's an instant uncommon. One mana deals four damage to our creature, Planeswalker. If it, oh dang, if it deals damage to a non-red permanent, you sacrifice a land. Oh, okay. Okay, that's the downside. I was like, wait a minute. One mana instant, four damage to a creature, a planeswalker. That's too crazy. But if it deals to a non-red permanent, you sack a land. So that's that's the problem there. I think I would still rather just play a bolt in modern, but like bolt doesn't kill Lily, but you know, still. I don't want to sack a land, so it's whatever. And then we got another one mana black card in Japanese here. Is it a duress? Is it a duress effect? It looks like it because the dude's holding his ears, and it's usually a duress effect. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from the opponent's hand. If you do, they exile that card. If a non-black card was exile this way, exile a card from your hand. Okay, I see what's going on with this one mana cycle. Like it's it's giving you this really insane effect, but then if it's not exactly the color of the card you're casting, then you have to exile a card from your hand. But this is not this is not bad. It's just like you're you're two for wanting yourself, but it's like it's a thought seize. It exiles the card without like losing life but just losing a card of your own is what's the what's the problem here but maybe it's not the biggest downside like maybe we'll see the c play in the future but maybe sideboard play but i don't know it's it's okay it's okay next up we got wandermare three mana for a three three whenever you cast a creature spell that has adventure put a one one counter on wandermare okay looks like that's not going to happen too often so basically just the three mana three three but for standard maybe there's gonna be a super sweet green white um adventure deck but i don't see that happening because i haven't seen too many good like adventure cards so far like the best one that i've seen so far is the the beast the beauty and the beast guy um and that's like the only like good one i've seen so far so i, I don't think this wandermare is going to be too useful as an outlet for those things next up we got edge wall innkeeper one man for a one one cast a creature spell that has adventure draw a card Okay, so that, I think that's way better than the three mana dude. I think the one mana dude is way better than the three mana dude. This dude looks like, um, what's that guy from, um, there's this show where he's like, this dude's dating another dude that's like way skinnier than him. And it's like uh, this falls around families. It has that, that Spanish lady that everybody just falls for. Um, that looks like that dude. Um, I don't know what though. I... But yeah, just casting a card or drawing a card for uh, for casting an adventure is way better than putting a counter. Our, but still, I don't think that I, I just don't believe so far that an adventure deck will, will be a thing. Um, but I, we have to wait and see if we get any more good green white adventures. Arden Veil Tactician, three mana for a two three, and it has an adventure to tap two creatures. Okay, tricky, tricky, and then uh, makes uh, turns to a two three flyer for three. Uh, I think that's not too useful. It's more of a limited card because it's more like a you go to combat, I'll tap down two of your best blockers, and then I'll untap and be able to attack and then follow up with a dude. So that's that's pretty good tempo for limited, but I don't think standard worthy. Because three three mana for a two three is not you want it to be ahead of the curve if you're gonna play it in a constructed format. And then next up we have Merchant of the Veil, which is one mana to you may discard a card if you do draw a card. That's actually not bad of an ability. That's actually acceptable. And then he turns into a three mana two three a rummager. You can pay three and discard a card, and if you do draw a card. So like that's actually like it doesn't tap to do it. So it's like literally if you can generate infinite red mana, like in commander or something, that's a source of drawing your entire deck. So that's not terrible. Like that's not that's not bad. Like you can find your lab man and just win. But there's like a lot of mana sinks that give you an infinite source of just like drawing your entire deck though. So this is just another one of many. And then we have a four mana two three dude. It's an elf and it costs two less to cast with the opponent controls a green permanent. Okay, sideboard. It has death touch, so it's hard to block. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So that's actually pretty cool because with that three toughness, it's not gonna be I mean, it's gonna still be tradable, but like, it's not like maybe early in the game, like if your opponent does have a green permanent and also maybe they're not gonna wanna block, like maybe they're not gonna wanna trade, but and it could just be a source of card advantage. Like if it gets in one hit, it did its job. And this dude can definitely, like if you play him on turn two, and especially if you're on the play, which likely not because your opponent has to have a green thing. So likely they're gonna drop a green thing on the second turn. Uh, then you 
may have a good chance of drawing a card. And at that point, after that, if it trades off with literally anything, it was a two for one. And that's great. So this is a good like sideboard dude for like standard, um, like mono green stompy mirror match probably. And then we have Fell the Pheasant, which is two mana instant, deals five damage to our creature with flying, create a food token. So it's basically like plummet or, you know, we've had things to deal five damage and instant speed to flyers. And then you create, oh, that's, I see the spice. I see the flavor there. And the art dude's like shooting down a birdie with an arrow. That's very close to the ground though. Um, yeah, we still got to find a really good use for food tokens, which I have not seen one yet. Like the Gilded Goose is probably like the best thing so far. Um, so oh, we're getting a Sorcerer Spyglass reprint and it's really cool. Um, I don't know if I like this one or the other one better, but the fact that this one has a really bright looking like goldy hay bale background is going to be pretty nice in foil. Elite Hunter. Okay, so we didn't get them all. Are we getting all 10 color hybrids? It's the it's the black it's a Rachnos Knight. It is a four mana two three minutes, and you can pay three. Sack another creature or artifact, and he deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. Doesn't even deal it to player. It should have just said any target. When you're paying, when you're dropping a four mana two three, and having to pay an additional three, just at the least let me hit any target. I think that's totally mediocre. But it's meant for the the black red sack deck and limited. Reef Soul reprint. We all know what this does. Uh, into the story. So this one, it's seven mana, draw four, but uh, this one we got yesterday, but I didn't go over these in the spoiler from yesterday, so I'll go over them today. Uh, it costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Now, if this did cost four mana just straight up, it'd be seeing play in modern forever, because that's insane. Uh, but it would cast seven, it would cost four to cast if the opponent has seven more cards in the graveyard. So if you ran this alongside like Inquisition and Thought Season Liliana to put some cards in your opponent's grave and then also Thought Scour to, to like put two cards in their grave, maybe there's a good chance of like it costing uh, four. And also your you could, your opponent could fetch maybe one or two times. Maybe you can kill their creature one or two times. And eventually this thing will cost like four. And I could see seeing this, this thing play as like a two of and like Esper, Grixis, just blue black, maybe like in modern. Uh, other than that, I don't think so. Epic Downfall. Destroy Terror. Exile Terror. Sure, so you've seen three or greater. Okay, so I see. We're getting the Reef Soul reprint hit something with three or less. And then we're getting the Epic Downfall to exile something with three or greater. So, yeah, that's actually a pretty good removal spell for Limited. Because, like, it's a lot of, like, the pretty much whatever you're going to use your, your removal on is usually going to be uh, power three or greater or CMC three or greater. Usually you don't waste your removal spell on something small and limited because usually you put out a blocker for that creature um, or you just play something bigger than it. So yeah, you definitely want to use your removal spells on something big anyway. So that's just straight up good removal. Maybe even standard viable. I don't know because there's a lot of small stuff in standard that's relevant to it too. Um, for Vin Champion, first strike haste for one mana. And when it attacks another target attacking knight you control gets plus one plus on until end of turn and equip abilities you activate that target for every champion costs three less to activate okay well i don't think you'd be playing a um equipment uh equipment knight deck in standard i think that it's that still seems like too much of a clunky thing to do in standard i think that's more of a commander thing to do um and a one mana one one haste, I don't think you would play in commander. And a plus one plus oh pump in commander is whatever. Um, so I, I just, I think this guy seems cool, but maybe for like mono red, mono red aggro in, in standard possibly. But the fact that he can't get two power as a one drop is um, pretty, pretty huge and it has no evasiveness. So like in standard, you, you'd want your, your hasty, like, like if raging goblin was standard, I don't think people would play it. Like... I think you'd want your guys to be able to have more power. But if we get another super relevant, good um, one drop hasty first strike or one drop hasty knight in for standard, that would be that would probably see play. Because but these dudes just you would have to have multiples for them to actually be worth something. But one damage per turn is like not enough when it's forced, especially when they can be blocked by literally anything. Uh, Bog Naughty. So five mana for a three, three flyer, sack of food to give target creature minus three, minus three until end of turn. So if you're playing food and limited, this is definitely what you'd want to draft at your top end. And that'd be an annoying way to just like get there. So that's pretty nice. Mary Leaf Rider, two mana for a three, one sack of food, target creature blocks it if able. I don't like that value either because I want to sack my food for something worth it. Just um, force your creature to trade off 
force your opponent to trade off something is, is not even that relevant. Um, it's basically just two for one yourself to be a, an okay removal spell. Not even It's not even okay because if your opponent is attacking with that creature that you want them to block with, it's over. Insatiable Appetite. Two mana, you can sack food. If you do, Tiger Creature gets plus five plus five. Otherwise, it gets plus three plus three. I like that because it's cool how like Titanic Growth was like in the middle and they wanted to seem more mediocre at first, but then like you can sack a food. Give plus, I, I mean, if you're playing a limited food deck, I think that that seems like a really good um, combat trick. Like even just plus three plus three is fine enough as a combat trick in limited. But the fact that it can just like chunk them for like a quarter of their health is actually like a good thing to to have on like available to you on the board like if you have like a like at least a couple good food makers and you have at least you drafted at least a couple of these that seems good to me so i like this thing um cauldron familiar oh i saw this one yesterday this dude is is super good in my opinion so one and a one 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 enters the battlefield each opponent loses one and you gain one so immediately that's like if you're playing like commander that's immediately just like you you did enough for a one drop one one uh and then sack of food to return him from a griever to the battlefield so if you have any way to generate food you just keep doing it over and over and over again so and you don't even have to pay any additional mana in addition to creating food so if there is a really good food uh food maker that we actually get which we haven't gotten a super good food maker yet but when we do if you after if you happen to be playing like a food based deck in commander or like brawl or something and you just start generating a bunch of food and say you have like a sack outlet like phyrexian altar or astronaut's altar and then you just start sacking food getting this dude back sacking him for mana sack food getting back sacking for mana and just drain drain and drain and drain and then you have like a bunch of mana in your mana pool so that seems like like it'd be a fun thing to do all those hard to set up and it, probably the payoff isn't totally worth it but it's just it, on paper, it seems like a fun thing to do. And also, it's going to be a cool foil because of the clear background. Opportunistic Dragon. We saw this one yesterday. 4 mana, 4, 3 flyer, which is always a decent card. Uh, a decent thing to do, like for standard. Um, but you choose a human or an artifact the opponent controls and you gain control of it for as long as you control this guy. And that could be relevant, maybe sideboard, but probably mainboard because it is a 4 mana, 4 power flyer, which is never a bad thing. But, um, like, that's not the most relevant for standard because... Um, I don't know if there's like a human aggro that, like white weenie do people even play that anymore I'm not sure I don't watch standard content but like what artifact decks are there in standard like there's I don't I can't think of any off the top of my head but you standard all-stars would know in the comments down below and that is about it for day number five of uh, Throne of Eldraine spoiler reactions. I would say that my favorite one of the day is a thousand million percent deafening silence uh, this is probably my favorite card in a while. Like, I would say in like the past three sets, I would say like, this is my favorite card. This is crazy. The commander player in me loves this card so much. And it's definitely one of my new favorite cards without even playing it. So let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite spoiler of the day? Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And like I said, we're doing these things daily. So we'll be back again tomorrow with another Throne of Eldraine spoiler reaction video. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.